Hey guys, welcome once again to the Guy Blog Podcast. As always, your host, Orlando Rodriguez. How are you guys doing? Hope you're doing well. This this little audio clip is coming in a little late. A little late because we're talking about No Mercy. Uh, but it'll be also a good listen if you hear you listen to it before No Mercy happens. You know, see if you agree, disagree. After No Mercy happens, see how good or... You know, how good my, you know, guessing, looking to the future um, feats are or abilities. But also, it, you can see how much I suck <laughs> at this. But regardless of, I'm just glad you guys are listening. So let's talk no mercy. I'm just going to go back. I'm going to go match by match. I'm going to go um, bottom to top. So, you know, what's on the pre-show and up from there give you my thoughts on the one i re- the ones i really care about and that i believe are more significant versus the ones that are not and talking about are not let's get this started with elias sampson or elias now just elias that should be his name just elias and versus apollo cruz so they added this to the pre-show no rhyme or reason. Don't really care about it. I'm saying they don't care about it. So why should I? Why should you? Why should any of us? Um, Apollo Cruz and eh, Elias. Eh, I, you know. And if Elias wins, then sure, whatever. But if Apollo Cruz wins, then whatever again. So, I don't care. Um, I'll put out a guess out there that Apollo Crews wins because of Titus Worldwide. and um, But really, it could literally go either way because they don't care which way it goes. <laughs> like, it could go, you know, left, right, up, down, disqualification, Elias wins, Apollo wins. Like anything can happen in this match. While the while usually that's the tagline for an exciting match, it's actually the opposite with this one. Is anything can happen because you know they don't care about it. So there you go for that one. Then Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt. This is the rare match where you care about the players. And that should make it more interesting, but it doesn't. Like, the match should be good and interesting because it's Finn Balor. And it's Bray Wyatt. And those are two people that I like to see wrestle and two people whose characters I like and whose everything, you know, in the ring, they're very good. But it's the second time. And the only difference is supposed to be a man versus man because... The first time Bray Wyatt fought the demon. Like, doesn't that sound like some dumb shit? Doesn't that sound like something ridiculous? I'm sorry, guys, but that doesn't... Like, oh, he fought the demon, so now you can't bring out the demon for this match. I'm fighting you, Finn, the man. It's like... Um, because of what I mentioned on their previous matchup, if you're going to bring out the demon, do something different, and then Finn didn't. It it brings even less meaning to this match. If when Finn Balor is the demon, he fights exactly like when he's Finn Balor, then, you know, you got beaten by Finn Balor dressed as a demon. That's all that happened. So, you fighting Finn Balor, not dressed as a demon, I don't have any reason to believe that you're going to win. It's the same moves. It's the same guy. It's the same energy. The same everything. He doesn't. He's not going to do anything different. So why? Why is this happening? I don't get it. I know that they don't know what to do with Bray Wyatt. All you know, beyond eating pins, like they don't know what to do with Bray Wyatt. They do not know how to make a consistent, long term, middle term, short term storyline with this man. They don't know what anything to do with their most original character on the roster. So they put him together with somebody else that has a very original character. And they said, hey, we can make both of these characters suck 
at the same time in the same storyline. Watch us do it. And now we're getting this. We can take two of our most exciting superstars, make them open up a pay-per-view, and be the crappiest part of that pay-per-view. With Elias Sampson and Apollo Crews, we're put in there just to make sure that Finn versus Brave wouldn't be the crappiest match that the people gave the least Fs about. That's the only reason that match exists. I just figured this out. Because if that match, Elias versus Apollo Crews, did not exist, Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt would automatically be the match to give zero Fs about. And while you still give zero Fs about, usually the match you give zero Fs, zero Fs about is the match that sucks the most. But we can't say that anymore. Elias will take care of this. He will make sure that his match sucks. And Apollo Crews will smile throughout it. I, I, ah. Let's move on to something interesting. Oh, who's going to win? I don't know. Finn Balor again? Yeah. Mm. You guys want me to, to really care? Bray Wyatt? I mean, if I think of it clearly, 50-50 booking, it should be Bray Wyatt. And it should be Bray Wyatt because if you want him to mean anything and not go straight into Dolph Ziggler territory, he should win this match. He should totally win this match to gain a little bit of credibility, to maintain a little bit of credibility that beyond all of the creepiness, he can still win a match. That, that's all I got for that. Then... We have Neville versus Enzo Amore. You heard that right. Neville versus Enzo Amore. I, I do not know. So, it is interesting. Um, Enzo being in the 205 division, actually, it doesn't bring up the quality of the division, but it does bring up the notoriety of the division. He Everywhere he goes, he's going to create noise. And for once, this is a positive for the division. Having said that, Enzo has nothing, nothing in his arsenal, in his skill set, in his abilities, in his wrestling acumen, in his wrestling IQ to bring or get a win versus a Neville. He just doesn't. He just doesn't. Which is why... They and and to be honest, it's surprising that they took that into consideration because I I feel they did because two hundred five is not a Vince McMahon production, not directly. So I think they took into account that Enzo Amore is not at this level. On a one on one match, Enzo Amore will get his ass kicked by almost everybody, starting with Neville. Neville will, as The Rock would say, would whoop that ass. He would just. You know it, I know it, Enzo knows it, the entire back knows it, everybody knows this. Enzo is not at this level from a wrestling standpoint. From an entertainment, eh. From a wrestling standpoint, he can't lace up Neville's boots. That's the truth. However, although he can't lace up Neville's boots, they have set it up so that all of a sudden... Enzo's a cheater, and he's willing to do whatever to win. Grab the tights, hold the ropes, do whatever it takes. That gives him a chance. I'm very afraid of one thing. Neville has brought a credibility to this division that it lacked. He is through and through the champ. He deserves it. He's one of the best in this wonderful, amazing, exciting division, but the division doesn't get any attention at all, at all, despite the fact that Neville is cutting amazing promos, they have unique characters, they have good storylines, but it's just placed and presented and promoted horribly. In comes Enzo. My fear, but, you know, and sometimes it has to happen, so it's like, ugh. Will they do it? And I'll be like, ugh, he doesn't deserve it, but I guess it's what's best for that division. Enzo could win. And if Enzo becomes the champ of this division, it will mean that somebody that they hate, they made a champion for the best of the division, which is fine by me. But if Enzo wins and he becomes the champion of this division, my God, this division. 
that is just wow. Neville losing to Enzo. They would make it because he cheated. They find a way back, but it it's a mixed bag of feelings for me. Enzo doesn't deserve it. Um, he's not, you know, I, I just, he's not ready to be a champion. He doesn't really deserve it right now. But hey, we've said that about a lot of people and they get championships. And we say about a lot of people that deserve it and they don't get it. Let's just do it for whoever can race. If Enzo being champion helps the 205 division, and by extension, all of those wrestlers in there, then fine. And I think it could happen, guys. If not today, meaning in this pay-per-view, then tomorrow in one of the future pay-per-views, they'll extend this out until Enzo wins that championship. Mark my words, Enzo is winning a title. Cruiserweight title, but he's winning a title. I Okay. I, I can't say anything else about that. I can't say if I'm happy or not. Like I said, I already explained. I have mixed feelings about it. But if it's good for the 205 division, go ahead. Neville should not lose this match. However, since Enzo is cheating, it opens up the door for Enzo, for Neville to lose and Enzo to win. So... Hey, this is my wild pick. Enzo wins the championship. Mm. Then we have Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins versus Cesaro and Sheamus. This is going to be a fun match. I can't wait for it. This is this is going to be the fun match of the night. This is going to be super duper fun. I do not know who's winning. I hope Cesaro and Sheamus get their titles back. But I do not see them taking the titles away from Dean and Seth. However, can one of these teams get a name? Cesaro and Sheamus rolls off the tongue. So they can stay like that. But Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. That's that's too long for a tag team name. And if they're going to be tag team champions. Call them the Shield. Call them Shield 2.0. Call them something easier to pronounce than freaking going through Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins are champions. Dean Am- no, 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 no. Give them a name or call them The Shield. I do not care. Either that or or Ambrose and Rollins. There we go. Ambrose and Rollins versus Cesaro and Sheamus. That sounds better. Thank you. I pick them to retain. Um, They have too much juice in the back. Um, Despite the fact that Cesaro and Sheamus actually deserve it more, need it more, and are better placed with the championships. For that division, Ambrose and Rollins continue their role. That, that's what I'm going with. Then we have The Miz versus Jason Jordan. Could this be when The Miz loses his title? Could this be when Jason Jordan finally wins an individual championship? I'm going to go with no. I could see it happen, I could see the logic behind it, but I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go with Jason Jordan not being ready. That's what I'm going with. Could be wrong. Plus, I'm already changing the title by saying that Enzo will win, which is very unlikely. Another unlikely title change with Jason Jordan and The Miz? I don't think so. Then... What would happen moving forward? I feel like The Miz wins with The Miz Raj helping. And that can carry that storyline and move it forward where, you know, you didn't beat him clean. And that can do more for that storyline. Jason Jordan wins right now. It just doesn't make sense. So I'm going with The Miz, keeping his, retaining his championship and keeping this amazing run going. Next, we have Alexa Bliss. Versus Bailey, versus Emma, versus Sasha Banks, versus Nia Jax, versus what the hell is going on here? Why does everybody have to be in this match? I am very this is ridiculous. Who is winning? Um, Nia Jax probably pinning Emma. Let's go with this. It's easier to go, know who's getting pinned. Emma is getting pinned. Emma is losing this match. That is the only reason Emma is here. Now, who's winning? 
It could be Sasha. It could be Nia. I'm thinking Nia Jax. So, well, no, I mean, if they put Emma in there, then somebody else could win. You know what? I'm changing my mind. Alexa could retain, but I'll say that Sasha wins yet again. Well, no, they're building this Alexa Nia thing. Hmm. Alexa could retain, but by pinning Emma, which keeps Bailey, Sasha, and Nia clean and maintains the status quo. Hmm. Alexa Bliss retains by pinning Emma. That's what I'm going with. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Because Nia could win the title, but she should win it on a one on one. Sasha could get the title back, but that would ruin the story for Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. Bailey could win the title. But, again, ruins the Alexa Bliss, Nia Jax story, although it could help set up the Bailey versus Sasha story. And, again, we said Emma's just there to eat a pen. So, knowing the creativity of WWE, I'll say Alexa Bliss pins Emma, retains the title. Boom. Storylines, everybody's intact. Everybody looks good, except Emma, but they don't care about Emma. Sadly, one of their best female wrestlers. And, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going with for that one. Let's keep it moving with John Cena versus the big dog, Roman Reigns. Woof, woof. So, this will be an action-packed match. I expect it to be a hard-hitting match, to be really interesting, to be really fun to watch. And I expect Roman Reigns to win. Unless something is going really wrong with him, besides how embarrassing it was for him to be on the mic versus John Cena. Um, But besides that, unless they're really against him, which they're not, they never will be, there's no reason for Roman Reigns to lose for John Cena, who's stepping away, who's becoming a real part-timer. There's no reason for him to win. There's nothing for the company there. You know, and win or lose, John Cena is John Cena, so it doesn't hurt or help him. Um, but Roman Reigns losing, it's kind of like, eh, you're not better than what's considered the present and past of this company, so how the hell are you the future? So him winning, in Vince McMahon's eyes, probably gives him a boost, helps him out. So I'm going with Roman Reigns wins. Wolf Wolf, big dog in the house. So... I, I do not know. It'll be... Yeah, it should be a clean pin. Um, gains John Cena's respect somehow. And, but I'm not excited for Roman Reigns wins. I feel like Roman Reigns should go on a losing streak. And hear me out. He should go on a losing streak where he gets angrier and angrier. And he finally makes some changes to his character. And as everybody says, he goes kind of heelish. Not full on heel. But he goes full, I don't give a fuck mode, but not this smiling, whatever, I don't, you know, a pissed off, I don't care what you say, what anybody says, I'm here to destroy. And stops wearing the freaking vest. And then he starts winning. And destroying people. And then he'll, when he's kind of heelish, people will accept him, they'll applaud him, and he'll become a baby face again. It's kind of go down, you know, the same Rocky Mayavia to the rock path. That's what he needs. <clears throat> Roman Reigns needs his Nation of Domination moment. That simple. He doesn't need like a crew or anything like that, but he needs to go through that heelish turn that will eventually get people to like him because he's so freaking cool. That's how it should be. They won't do it, but I do think he's going to win. And then we have Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman. I'm, I don't know if I want to predict this match. Because this should be Suplex City all over the place. It could be 1 at 5 and Braun is done. But it could also go down the route of, you know, key is, I believe, Brock is keeping the title. There's no reason Braun is getting, should get it or would get it right now. But how does he retain? Does he retain by beating Braun cleanly? I doubt it. I feel like this could go down the route of Braun destroying Brock Lesnar, as he's done a couple of times, but like truly destroying him, using chairs, tables, stairs, everything, 
having security, referees, everybody come out to try to like just stop him. Just a destruction of Brock Lesnar. Brock would retain the championship. And Brock would be able to say the only reason that, that you actually did any of that was because you used all of these stuff to, to hit me with. Because on a clean one, one-on-one, you couldn't do it. And Braun would, book, would look like the ultimate badass. That's how I see that going. I, I don't see it. I, I just, they've done such a great job to now to keep Braun strong. I don't think they're going to just want to like have him squashed by Brock Lesnar. Um, because Braun is the long-term future. And that would work. Just make Braun start using everything he can to just destroy Brock Lesnar. Because Braun doesn't care about no title. He doesn't care about it. He just he all he cares about is being number one, top of the food chain. He doesn't care about a title saying he's number one. He cares about destroying everybody that's in the ring with him to prove he's number one, title or not. So with that, I feel like this would work perfectly. This that that's the way to go, and that's what I'm saying. That's gonna happen. You know, it'll look like Brock is winning at some point. It'll look even, but then when Braun sees that he can't get Brock Lesnar for the one, two, three, he's gonna get pissed. They're gonna be fighting on the outside, and he's just gonna get angry, and he's gonna slam him against the stairs, and then slam him against the barricade, and carry him destroy a table, and. It'll, they'll be counted out, but he doesn't care. And he, now that they're counted out, he'll keep going and do more and more and more. I, I just feel like that should be, it should be like bronze. Like goal for the night is annihilation. And if they do that, man, that, that would be awesome. So I'm looking forward to that. I believe that that's what's going to happen. Some variation of that. And I think overall, No Mercy is going to be a very good pay-per-view. So let's see what happens. Um, Sorry for the late upload, guys, but I just had to get my thoughts in order with everything. But as always, this is Orlando. Let me know your thoughts. If you listen afterwards, let me know what you thought about my correct and incorrect predictions. And take care. Talk to you soon.